Hey guys, I will be talking a bit about the history of Japan. I will be talking about their overall history, their media, comparing them to their own country, some issues regarding their media as well as its role, and what I personally believe about the future of their media. So, let's jump right in. Dating back to negative 300 BC, the Joman era began. The early Japanese consisted of hunters, gatherers, and fishers. Following this era, the Yayoi period began around 250 AD, where new technologies were introduced from the continental Asia. During this period, in the 1st century AD, the first known written reference to Japan was recorded in the Chinese Book of Han, a book about the history of China which finished in 111 AD. It covers the Western or former Han Dynasty from the first emperor in 206 BC to the fall of Wang Mang. The, the introduction of rice agriculture helped start the development of a social hierarchy, where hundreds of small countries started to come together and form larger countries. Japan's many kingdoms and tribes gradually came to be unified under one centralized government, which was controlled by the emperor. Japan remained cut off to any foreigner, foreigners until the 1500s until missionaries and traders began to arrive from Europe. For more than two centuries, this policy allowed Japan to enjoy its peak of indigenous culture. Soon, Japan opened its ports after signing the Treaty of Kanagawa with the United States in 1854, which ultimately led to the modernization and, and industrialization of the country. Japan was closed to the rest of the world for 217 years. During the time of 1635 to 1852, there was a law known as the Sakoku Edict that restricted trade, banned foreign travel by Japanese, banned Christianity, and made Japan off-limits to most foreigners. Throughout the, uh, throughout the time of Japan's isolation, the country became less technolo technologically advanced compared to its western counterpart. However, after its defeat in World War II, Japan was able to recover and become an economic power. Enough about the brief overview and on to the media. The communications of Japan consist of very many different television networks and radio, as well as newspapers and magazines. One of the most distinguished networks is the NHK, or the Nippon Hoso Kyokai. This is a publicly owned corporation funded by viewers' payments through a television license fee. The NHK controls two terrestrial television services, General TV and as well as Educational TV. Additionally, they have two satellite television services and even three different radio networks. They also receive financial support from the government and is managed on a full-time basis by an executive board. The newspaper is also very popular in Japan. The Shimbun newspaper, published in Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, and another and a few other major cities in Japan, is part of the Yomiuri Group, which is said to be Japan's largest media corporation. There are five different types of these national papers: the Yomiuri, Asahi, Mainichi, Nikkei, and Sankei. These papers are listed as either conservative, progressive, or economic, and they can each accomplish selling and they each accomplish selling millions of copies every day. Another popular form of media is the shukanshi, which is a Japanese term for any weekly magazine. It is said in a review that, ja that the genre is often described as bizarre blends of various types of U.S. magazines, such as Newsweek, The New Yorker, People, etc. The shukanshi has also been known to be a source of anti-Semitic uh, articles in Japan, which have often included controversial and politically incorrect magazines that have been reviewed. So how does Japan's media compare to ours? For many years, Japan fell behind on internet access and internet-related technology development compared to advanced countries like the United States. Between the times January 1977 and March 1999, there were 12 times as many internet-related copyrights in the U.S. and in Japan. In 1998, only 11% of the Japanese had the ability to get down the internet, while 26.3% of the Americans had access. Although, in the graph shown on the slide, it is evident that the number of users in the, uh, of the internet in Japan rose extraordinarily. Japan's Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications White Paper stated that the internet, the internet penetration rates in Japan increased to 21.4% as of February 2000, which was like the UK's 23.7% of internet penetration rates. Continental Europe was said to be 15% Germany, 129 in France, but was still considered low when compared to Scandinavia, Iceland being 45% in the internet, the US being 39.4%. Going back to the Shikanchi, it is said that they are a far cry from the US or even most British tabloids, as they are said to be far more influential. Shikanchi features materials such as serious political news, book reviews, and fiction, as well as social commentary. Also, depending on the magazine, most of the material can stick to, to good or even very high literary standards, something not often present in the U.S. or British tabloids. Sadly, there has been a loss of media freedoms of Japan. An article titled The Silencing of Japan's Free Press said that in March of 2016, three of the country's most outspoken television anchors were removed almost simultaneously by three different networks. As the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the Abe, and the Abe administration, this had uh, the legal power to shut down TV broadcasters that deemed to be politically biased. 
Press watchers now warn that Japan is losing its limited press independence. The Asahi Shimbun was even attacked by Abe himself due to the coverage of the Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011 and, in, and its comfort women coverage back in 2014. The article is saying that they were opposing the revisionist rights to efforts to whitewash sordid aspects of Japan's World War II era history like the comfort women forced to work in military brawls. On October 3rd of 2014, Abe attacked the Asahi for damaging Japan's reputation after the newspaper admitted that more than a dozen stories about comfort women published in the past were founded on the sourcing of a discredited Japanese army veteran. So Abe saying that it mis that its misreporting has caused numerous people to feel hurt, sorrow, suffering, and outrage, concluding with saying that it has caused uh, damage to Japan's image. In recent years, public attention is increasingly brought to the international issues in Japan. Most of the public agrees that Japan should make contributions to the international community in various fields. Japan affects the issues related to the building of a new international framework of partnership. Expectations are rising in the international community that Japan should play a role equal with its current political status. Japan has grown to have an important position in the international community, and they have accomplished amazing, amazing development after the war. Overseas, the interest in Japan recently is becoming more and more present, further understanding the viewpoint that, that many different countries have towards Japan. Various cultural exchanges will be in their best interest. In today's world, information can be now transmitted across most borders at will. As a result, different countries' viewpoints of Japan are being expressed through both official government information as well as, well as public opinion. This results in, in encouraging a better understanding of Japan in other areas as the Japanese public opinion is growing increasingly significant. It is becoming gradually essential uh, to put both domestic and overseas public relations and activities into view. Japan's future, I feel, is very strong. In a matter of a decade, it is evident that Japan has grown to be a very powerful country in the view that they have grown to be very respected by other nations due to their success, which I feel is largely thanks to the public. However, if Japan's press continues to be silenced and the citizens will have less of an opinion, I feel it could have harsh repercussions. In the end, I feel that Japan will likely play an even greater role in the future than ever before, both with their progressively advanced technology as well as their increased gradual presence in international affairs. Thank you for listening. Hope you were able to learn a little bit more about the amazing country of Japan.